What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com back with another SketchUp extension tutorial for you. So in today's video I wanted to talk about a slightly different program called Transmuter. So what Transmuter does is it's a it's basically a program designed to help you import more file types into SketchUp. So as a lot of you know, sometimes it can be a little hit or miss getting uh, good models out of the 3D warehouse depending on what you're trying to do. This program is specifically designed to help you import other kinds of models and set them up so you can use them inside of SketchUp. So this can be especially important if you want to use high quality uh, models in your renderings and other things like that. So I'll kind of talk through some of the basics of the way that it works and also some of the benefits of using this program. I did want to note that Transmuter is currently on sale for Black Friday. So um, you can check that out on my Black Friday sales page at the SketchUpEssentials.com slash Black Friday. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. So one of the things about using 3D models is there are a lot of great resources out there for those models. So for example, if we were to open up Quixel Megascans page, Quixel is a company that has a number of very realistic different uh, kinds of files in here. And so there's a couple that I've downloaded that I want to bring into SketchUp. So um, I downloaded these under the free trial. And uh, so like for example, there's this really highly detailed cliff model that they have in here that I want to be able to bring into SketchUp. However, if I go into my download settings, my options for the model itself are OBJ or FBX. So SketchUp doesn't import OBJ or FBX files. If you look at this list, those are not included on this list. So if I wanted to use any of these files, I wouldn't really be able to do that just due to the way that SketchUp um, the kinds of files that SketchUp can import. However, if I use an extension like Transmuter, this can actually take different file types like 3DS, um, DAE, FBX, OBJ, and STL and convert them into a SketchUp ready um, kind of file. And so the way that that works is you open up Transmuter and it works outside of SketchUp. So it's an actual standalone program. But what you do is you find a file and then you bring that in. So let's go ahead and use the um, Quixel rock files that are in here. So you can see how when I open these up, you've got the different levels of detail. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to bring in the most detailed model just so we can take a look at that. And so you can see how what this will do is this will bring in that OBJ file and it gives you a number of different things that you can adjust um, to get this ready to go into SketchUp. And so probably the most common thing that I see in here is that you need to adjust the up axis so this is actually standing up as opposed to being like halfway into the ground or something like that. So part of the problem is a lot of the sites um, like Quixel will give you the model file but then the actual materials that go on that model are in a different folder. So for example, if I look at this folder, and I've already converted this, which is why there are actual SketchUp files in here, but if you look in here, there's actual image files on here that need to be wrapped around or placed on top of this. So you also have the various different maps that go on top of this that you can use um, in order to create a more realistic rendering. But the problem is these OBJ files don't actually have that applied. So what we need to do, and a transmuter may makes this really easy is we need to go into the materials tab here and we need to load in our different materials. So for example, for my default material, I need to click on this and you can see how there's an option here for color or diffuse. So that's basically the texture file that's going to give this texture. Well, if you were to import this into SketchUp as is, you wouldn't have that texture associated with this. But if you click on this, you can actually go find that file. And in this case, it's the file labeled albedo. And you can see how what this is going to do is that's actually going to bring that texture in and it's already been mapped to this rock file. So all you have to do is just double click on it in order to bring that in. So if you wanted to, if you were just using this for SketchUp, you could go ahead and click the button for transmute and you could bring that into SketchUp really easily. However, one of the cool functions of Transmuter is it also has the option to bring in other maps. And so these are the maps that get used inside of your rendering program. So like for example, the bump map makes your surface look bumpy and more realistic. So you can bring those different maps in here and load them in as a part of this file. So for example, I have a normal map that came along with this. So I'm going to go find the normal map and I'm going to double click on it to bring it in. And I'm going to do the same thing with the uh, reflection map. 
So in this case, I believe that's going to be your gloss map. And then also, if you have a displacement file, which is something that makes this look more realistic, you can load that in as well. So, like for example, I could go ahead and load this displacement file. That'll show up in V-Ray and make your surface look even more realistic. But once you've loaded all of those in, you then have a choice. So you can either take this file and you can transmute it as is, or you can simplify the mesh, meaning you can make it simpler so that it won't make SketchUp run slower with a ton of different polygons and things like that. Or you can import that as a proxy file. So let's do one of each, or at least a simplified version and a proxy file. So for example, if I click this box right here for show edges, you can see how many edges and faces are currently contained on this rock. Um, and if this is going to be too many, so you can see how this gives you statistics on this. So this is telling you of 13,000 triangles on here right now. Well, if you want to make this simpler, you can drag this to the right and it'll actually re reduce and simplify the number of triangles that are contained on your face. And so you do need to be a little bit careful if you pull this way to the right. Um, in this situation, actually with this one, this one actually works out pretty nicely. But with some files, if you simplify it too much, you'll start losing faces. So you have to be a little careful here. But you can see I can use this mesh simplification to simplify this object from 13,000 triangles to 5,300. So what this means is this means that you can bring in these very detailed models from external sources into SketchUp without suffering a huge performance. Hit. So let's say I wanted to go ahead and I wanted to bring this fully into SketchUp. I could just click the button for transmute. And what that'll do is that'll allow me to save this as a SketchUp file. So for this one, I'm just going to save this as LOD0 underscore full geometry. And I'm going to click the button for save. And so what that'll do is that'll export that as a SketchUp file. And then now you can see how the LOD0 file is in here and it's a six megabyte file, but I can double click on that and I can import that into SketchUp. So you can see how what this allows me to do is this allows me to import this OBJ file in here with all of the different materials and other things like that into SketchUp. And I believe it exported it as an SKP file. And so if I was to render this or make copies of this, I can use this however I want to. Now it's just a regular standard SketchUp model. So you can either bring this in as full geometry like this, or inside of Transmuter, you can also export it as a proxy file. So if you export it as a proxy file, that's going to bring this in as a lightweight piece of geometry and the full geometry will get loaded in um, when you run your rendering program. So I'm currently using Enscape. So let's go ahead and export this as an Enscape proxy. And you can set the kind of proxy this creates. So you can set it where it just creates a box or a very simple geometry version, lots of different things. I'm gonna go ahead and leave it as face skipping for right now. And then I'm gonna go ahead and click the transmute button again. And we're gonna save this with an underscore Enscape proxy label. And so when you save that, that's actually gonna save two files inside of that folder. So you can see how there's an Enscape proxy file that's only 210 kilobytes, and there's also a full geometry file that stays in the same folder. So, and that one is 8.93 megabytes. And so what'll happen is if we import this into SketchUp, so if we do a file import, and we want the Enscape proxy file, you can see how this brings this in as a lightweight proxy. However, let's go ahead and let's make like five copies of it or something like that, just so we can see specifically where this rock shows up. And then we run this in Enscape. And this also works for V-Ray and I believe Thayer Render as well. Um, but if we go ahead and run this in Enscape, what this is gonna do is this is actually gonna load in the full geometry of those rocks. So you can see how those rocks actually get brought in at the full geometry and they look really good, by the way. Um, Megascans files are really, really realistic. They look really great. But you can see how even though inside of SketchUp, those are just in here as proxy files, inside of Enscape, they're rendered as the real rock files.
So not only can you use this to import different models um, that aren't necessarily natively SketchUp, but you can also use this to create high performing, really realistic proxy models as well. So I'll also note that this has a full integration with Megascans Bridge. I don't have a full Megascans license, so I can't really demo that feature right now, but basically what it does is instead of you having to set up all those different material files, it'll do it for you. So that's also a great feature if you are working with Megascans assets. So if you're interested in Transmuter, make sure you check out the Transmuter sale. Um, you can find that at the sketchupessentials.com slash Black Friday. So if that's something you're interested in, you want to check it out, make sure you check out that website. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it. I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.